I'm Dr. Matthew Schulman, board certified plastic surgeon in New York City, and today let's talk breast lifts. A breast lift is a really common operation. You sometimes hear it referred to as a mastopexy, which is just the fancy medical term for a breast lift. Now, a breast lift itself does exactly what you probably think it does it lifts the breast. So, if you're someone who finds that your breasts are a little bit droopy because you've lost weight, or you've had multiple pregnancies, or it just happened while you aged, or maybe it was just the way you were born, then a breast lift or mastopexy might be what you need. If this is something that you're thinking about, then I really think that you're gonna learn a lot of information from this video. It's gonna help you prepare for the surgery, and it's also gonna remove some of that anxiety you may have about the procedure and the recovery. So we'll talk about what the procedure does, how I do it, where I do it, what the recovery is like, the scarring, and everything else you want to know about breast lift surgery. So breast lift surgery does exactly what you think it's gonna do. It lifts the breast. And we do this by recreating a nice, perky, round breast by reshaping the breast tissue on the inside and also removing some of the extra skin that's on the outside. During the operation, the nipple is moved upward. We don't remove it. We just slide it upward so that the nipple position is up high. So you may be wondering, how do I know if I need a breast lift? And you may think it's easy to tell if your breasts are drooping or not, but you have to figure out the difference between drooping breasts, which is sagging, and deflation of the breast. So basically the breasts just deflate. So they, they are more empty. If your breasts are deflated, then the answer and the solution is adding volume. And that's where something like a breast implant may be what you need. However, if your breasts are sagging, then what you need is a breast lift. The way to tell is to really look at where the nipples are. If your nipples are pointing down and they're below the fold of your breast, then by definition, you have drooping breasts. If your breasts are just deflated, but your nipples are still pointing straight and they're above the fold, then you have involution or deflation, not sagging. So again, it's the nipple position which is key in determining whether a breast lift is what you need. Nipples down below the fold, breast lift. Nipples straight and above the fold, implant. So when you come to see me for your consultation, I'll examine you and I'll be able to let you know if a breast lift is really what you need. And I'll be able to show you what your breast will look like after your lift. Remember, a breast lift just lifts. So it's using the same breast tissue that you have. We're, we're repositioning it and reshaping it and making it rounder, but I'm not making you bigger and I'm not really making you smaller. We're just getting you up and perky. I will also review the scars that you should expect. Just like with any plastic surgery procedure, there are certainly going to be scars. The scars that you have will depend on the specific breast lift technique that you need. There are different techniques. In general, the more lifting you need, the more scars you're going to have. So if you just need a little bit of a lift, then it may be possible to just make the scar around the areola. If you need a little bit more of a lift, then you're most likely gonna have a scar that goes around the areola and down the front, sometimes called a lollipop scar. If you're someone that needs more of a lift because your breasts are just really sagging, then you probably will need what's called an anchor scar, which is around the areola, down the front, and underneath. And again, during your consultation, I'll be able to tell you exactly which scar I think you need based on the, the specific technique that I'm gonna do to lift your breast. So how do you prepare for the surgery? You will need medical clearance, so you're gonna go to your regular doctor, you're gonna get full medical clearance. We're gonna check you out from head to toe to make sure that you're healthy and that you are safe for the surgery. So you'll have blood work, you'll have an EKG, your doctor will listen to your heart, listen to your lungs, and we make sure everything's as perfect as it can be. If there is any issues with your health, then I am absolutely not gonna operate on you because it's not worth the risk. If you are 40 years old or above, you're also gonna get a mammogram. So we'll get a mammogram in preparation for the surgery to make sure there's no issues with your breast. 
if you have a strong family history of breast cancer or a personal history of lumps and bumps or, or any suspicious lesions of your breast, even if you're below 40, then I may recommend that you get a mammogram as well. On the day of surgery, you're gonna come in and my surgeries are done in my office. So right behind me, this is not a green screen. This is a real operating room. This is a fully accredited certified operating room. I have registered nurses, physician assistants, board certified anesthesiologists, and all the safety requirements that we have in a hospital. The only thing that really makes this operating room different than a hospital is I can't keep you overnight. So that's a good thing. We do the surgery and then you're able to go home the same day after you spend an appropriate amount of time in the recovery room. So you're gonna have the surgery in my operating room. You will be fully asleep. You won't feel anything. I'll do the surgery. When we're done, you'll move into my recovery room and you'll spend anywhere between an hour and a half or two hours in the recovery room until you feel okay. And then somebody's able to come, pick you up and bring you home. In terms of the recovery, surprisingly, this surgery really doesn't hurt very much. It's interesting because things like liposuction or breast implants, tummy tucks, these are all operations that hurt more than a breast lift. A breast lift just involves really removing skin and repositioning your breast tissue, which isn't really painful. You may feel a little bit of discomfort, but I think you're gonna be surprised afterwards how little pain you have and how little pain medicine you're actually gonna require. So for the first week after surgery, I want you to just, just take it easy. It doesn't mean lay in bed and do nothing. It, you certainly can still do normal activities like move around the house, um, clean yourself, you know, get things to eat, you know, general activities of daily living, but I don't want you lifting anything heavy. I don't want you doing any exercise and I just want you to be careful. So that's really for the first week. After a week, we'll check you in the office. We'll make sure everything's healing well and assuming you're doing well and everything's healing without any complications, then we'll be able to let you do more activities. So you'll be able to be more active, go on longer walks, lift some things um, anywhere between 10 and 20 pounds. But we're gonna, still gonna hold off on heavy exercising or going to the gym for a few more weeks. So what type of result should you expect after your breast lift surgery? Basically, we're gonna make your breast perkier and rounder. Some people do feel that their breasts appear smaller. And it makes sense. Remember, your breast tissue is not really being reduced during a breast lift. It's just being lifted and made more round, but because things are up and perkier and rounder, it tends to appear a little bit smaller. But again, we're not doing anything with your breast volume, so I didn't really change your breast size, but the perception is that they appear a little bit smaller. People always wanna know, how long will the results last? So much like any plastic surgery that I do, the results don't stop working. It's not like they expire. However, the aging process still continues. That means that when I'm done, your breasts are gonna be up and perky and look great. But in 20 or 30 years, you can't reali realistically expect that your breasts are still gonna stay up there because your body's aging. You're losing collagen, you're losing elastin, your skin's getting thin. Um, hormone changes in your body can make your breasts droop. Your, um, your weight may change, you may gain weight or lose weight. So all these things contribute to breast drooping and all those things still exist even if you had a breast lift procedure. The results of the surgery don't expire or stop working, but the normal aging process and the normal changes of your body still happen. And that's something that you have to understand no matter what your cosmetic surgery is. Now let's talk about scars. Scars are one of those things that everybody's worried about. And like I said, any surgery you have, whether it's plastic surgery or, or a general surgery or anything anywhere on your body, there are going to be scars. I wish as a plastic surgeon, I can make scars invisible. I can't. As a plastic surgeon, we certainly have techniques available to us that other people may not have. So I think it's fair to say plastic surgeon scars tend to look better than non-plastic surgeon scars, but there are still scars and they're still gonna be there. So it's gonna be important for you to do things to take care of your scars during your healing period. So I always recommend using a silicone scar gel. 
So you can put that scar gel on your scars while they're healing and you're gonna use that for many months, probably four months or six months. That will help keep the scar from getting thick and it really makes the scar look great. The other thing you wanna do is avoid direct sun exposure to your scars. The UV rays from the sun will make your scar look redder and make that redness last longer. So you wanna be careful. If you're out and you're on the beach or you're just in a t-shirt and you're still getting sunlight, the UV rays will go through your clothes and will make that scar look redder. So make sure to put on sunscreen onto that scar. And you wanna use a heavier sunscreen right on those scars. Don't be afraid, the scar is gonna be fine. Now it's very common to combine a breast lift with other surgeries. So maybe you want your breasts up and perkier, but you want them to be a little bit bigger. That is a situation where we might combine a breast lift with a breast implant. So I do the lift to make them perky, and then we put in an implant to make things bigger. So a breast lift and implant is definitely a thing if that's what you want. So a lot of people will do a breast lift in combination with other procedures, and they may call it a mommy makeover. So if you're coming to see me because your breasts are droopy because you lost a lot of weight or you've had multiple pregnancies, then it's very likely that there are other parts of your body that bother you, like your tummy. So a tummy tuck, which will remove the extra skin of your belly and tighten the abdominal muscles, is commonly done with a breast lift. And that's simply because a lot of people that want a breast lift also want a tummy tuck. So if there's a way to do those two procedures safely in a single operation and allow you one recovery, it makes a lot of sense. So if you're interested in learning more about breast lift surgery, make an appointment with a board certified plastic surgeon that's experienced in breast procedures. He or she will examine you, discuss with you what your options are and whether or not a breast lift is really what you need. Perhaps you need an implant or perhaps you need a lift plus an implant. And this is what is covered during the consultation. So I hope that this video was informative and you learned a little bit more about breast lift surgery and maybe you're not so scared of having it done if that's what you need. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and share, and keep an eye out for all the other videos I have explaining procedures and also discussing common questions that you may have regarding plastic surgery. I'm Dr. Matthew Shulman and thanks for following.